Well, if you are a parent, then you've probably been warned at some point, the screen time is bad for your kids. And now new research out of the University of Houston says it could actually be beneficial. Our Kathy Hernandez takes a closer look at the study's findings, and we're talking about a positive impact here, Kathy. Right. Technology is everywhere. We can't get away from it, but that's what we've been told for so long. The study show then screen time for toddlers under three watching age appropriate apps along with parent engagement can actually promote creativity, learning and problem solving. The world we live in, we're surrounded by technology, right? It, everywhere you go. It's a sign of the times. Viviana Mendoza, wife and mother of two young girls, understands it. Come on, let's draw. She allows her daughter, six-year-old Sophia and one-year-old Chloe to have screen time. So I think it is important that we introduce them and now, even my six-year-old, she's in first grade. Most of her lesson is through technology, through an iPad. But for years, parents have been told technology is unhealthy for their children. The American Academy of Pediatrics recommended no more than two hours of screen time a day for children and absolutely no screen time for those under two. Even that has changed. You have to keep in mind that technology is here to stay, it's not going away. That's why distinguished professor of psychology, Elena Grigorenko, along with graduate students at the University of Houston, led a study focused on how it impacts toddlers. Touch the red dot. Over five weeks, they watched a two-year-old boy they named Ryan using a tablet and sitting beside a caregiver. We had to work in pairs, look at that footage, and carefully pay attention to every single little behavior, like his affects, uh, when the caregiver talks, when he, you know, swipes, when he taps. They say when it looked like Ryan was bored or distracted, he was actually mind wandering. But what was happening up here was that his mind was wandering away from the problem, giving him a moment to solve it and then come back and be able to learn. He started exploring more and taking initiative and working by himself more and not really listening, not really seeking out the caregiver because he became more proficient and more curious. And that curiosity is really important because that's the drive for him to learn. The study also stressed the importance of engagement with a parent, sibling, or caregiver. While the caregiver did not give him actual instructions on how to play a game or how to navigate between apps, the caregiver did give him encouragement and praise when he was able to do something and asked him questions that encouraged his exploration. I am relieved because I feel like there is a lot of shame, right, towards that. And I d that's one of the things that I disagree, right? For parents like Mendoza, she'll take advantage of the benefits of technology, but keep a balance in their daily lives. I do feel strong about a balance because we still need to learn how to write and figure out how to maneuver in the world without the technology. The American Academy of Pediatrics encourages parents to limit screen time, encourage regular playtime, specifically outdoors, and get involved in their lives. Of course, they also say parents should be aware of what apps their kids are on. More than 80,000 apps are labeled educational. Is that the case, though? On click2houston.com, we'll post a link to Common Sense Media, an organization that reviews age-appropriate apps. Kathy Hernandez, KPRC2 News.